Welcome to Electron Line, and in this example we're going to show you how to find the standard deviation of a random variable but in this case the sample and it is indeed a sample it's going to be a number of values picked from a very large population for example we have a potato chip factory that produces 9.8 ounce bags of potato chips and we're wondering how many ounces are in each bag and we produce thousands and thousands of bags per day and so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and randomly pick 60 bags, open them up, take out the potato chips and weigh them and find out what the weight is of, of those potato chips. And so we found that one bag had 9.6 ounces in it, three bags at 9.7, six bags 9.8, 10 bags 9.9, 18 bags exactly 10, 12 bags 10.1, 7 bags 10.2 and 3 bags 10.3. If you add all these numbers together here, indeed you'll get 60 bags. And so what we want to do now is calculate the standard deviation. What is the variation and is that good or do we want to change the process so that we maybe tighten up our, our variation a little bit more. So let's calculate the standard deviation here. To do that we need to find the average value. And since each number has an equal probability of occurring, we need to take all 60 values add them up, divide by 60, and that would then be our average. Of course, we can do this a little bit simpler by saying that, and I'll do it over here, that the average value for x is equal to, that would be 1 time 9.6 plus 3 times 9.7 plus 6 times 9.8 plus 10 times 9.9 plus 18 times 10.0 plus continue on over here that would be 12 times 10.1 plus 7 times 10.2 plus 3 times 10.3 and the whole thing divided by a total of 60 bags because there's 60 in total so now of course we're going to need a calculator so 9.6 plus 3 times 9.7 plus 6 times 9.8 plus that would be 99 plus that would be 180 plus that would be 12 times 10.1 plus that would be 7 times 10.2 and plus 3 times 10.3 okay I think I picked my numbers correctly because that is equal to 600 divided by 60 which is equal to 10. So the average value, the average number of ounces in each bag is 10 ounces and so that's good because we want at least to be 9.8 otherwise we would be in violation of a rule where whatever we claim we have in our bag we should have at least that many. Now obviously you look and see that there's at least 4 out of 60 that don't have the proper number of ounces of potato chips in the bags which is not a good thing. Alright now we're going to calculate the standard deviation and so this is going to be equal to the square root of the difference between each value and the average. Now also notice that notice that there is one of these and there's three of those and six of those so you have to account for the probability of occurrence there as well. So what we need to do here is we need to take uh, one time and that would be 9.6 minus 10 quantity squared plus three times that would be 9.7 minus 10 quantity squared plus 6 times 9.8 minus 10 quantity squared plus 10 times 9.9 minus 10 quantity squared and we'll continue over here again that's an unorthodox way of doing it but hey we have no room on the board so we'll do it this way so it would be 18 times 10 minus 10 quantity squared of course this is 0 plus 12 times 10.1 minus 10 quantity squared plus 7 times 10.2 minus 10 quantity squared and finally plus 3 times 10.3 minus 10 quantity squared. All right, and the whole thing divided by the total number. Oh, but notice something different here. It is n minus 1 instead of n. Ah, that is interesting. And the rule is that if we have a sample of a total population and the population is very large, we then want to use n minus 1 rather than n. 
if we have the whole population considered, let's say those who are all the bags we produce in a day, and that's the whole population, then we would divide by n. In this case, we're dividing by n minus 1 because it's a sample of a larger population. So in this case, it would be 60 minus 1, which is 59. All right. So let's go ahead and figure all that out. So here we have 0.4 squared. Uh, the 0.4 squared, that's 0.16 plus 0.3 squared, that's 0.09 times 3, which would be plus 0.27, plus, that would be 0.2 squared, times 6 would be 0.24, plus, that would be 0.1 squared, that's 0.01 times 1, that's 0.1, plus, this is 0, plus 0.1 squared times 12, that would be 0.12, plus, that would be 0.2 squared, 0.04 times 7, that would be 0.04 times 7, ooh. 0.04 times 7 equals, ooh, uh, plus, that would be 0.3 squared, 0.09 times 3, it would be 0.27 equals, so I end up with, let me write it down, because then we can check again later, that's the square root of 1.44 divided by 59, so divide that by 59, and then we take the square root. So that's equal to the square root of 0 0.0244. And if we take the square root of that, we get 0 0.156. And of course, that would be in ounces. And that's what we call the standard deviation. I'm going to check this one more time real quick. Make sure we got that correct. And so it would be a 0.4 squared plus a 0.33 squared equals... Ooh, now I get a very different number. I get 7.24. So, I will have to do this a third time just to make sure I did not make a mistake. I was afraid that I think I pushed the wrong button. So, one more time through this whole set to make sure I have this correct. So, 0.4 squared plus Point. 3 Point. squared times equals... Ah, this is correct, that's not correct, and I've got it right here. Okay, we're good. See, sometimes you have to do it three times just to make sure you get correct value because it's easy to mess up on a single button. All right, good. So now I have my standard deviation. What does that mean again? Now notice how nicely our sample of 60 values mirrors a normal distribution. It's not yet perfect, but the larger your sample, the closer your numbers will end up becoming like a normal distribution. If I had picked 100 bags or 200 bags or 300 bags, it would be closer and closer to the perfectly normal distribution. And that means that if I find the average value, which is 10, so this is my average value, and I add plus one sigma and I subtract one sigma from that, then that would then contain 68.2% of, <coughs> of all my values. So let's try that. So let's take 10 plus one sigma and 10 minus one sigma and see what we get. So that would be 10.156 and that would be uh, 9 point, and that would be 844. And so we expect 68.2% of all the bags to fall within plus or minus one sigma. Let's see if that is indeed correct. So let me go ahead and everything that's less than 10.2 and everything that's greater than 9.8, does this represent 68.2% of all the bags? And let's find out. So this would be 30, 40, that would be 40 out of 60. 40 out of 60, which is equal to 0 0.667, which is 66.7%, very close of the predicted value of 68.2%. So, therefore, we can see that if we calculate our plus or minus sigma, they calculate the standard deviation, then we get a really good value, a really good idea of what percentage of the bags will fall within that range and we'll get a good distribution and a good understanding of how tight our control process is in producing potato chips in this factory. And so again, finding plus or minus one sigma, how about plus or minus two sigma? So if we add plus or minus two sigma plus two sigma, so we add another 1.56 to that, uh, or 0.156, now we get 
10.3012, I guess, right? Six, uh, that's 312, that's no, like this. And then if we go <coughs> to this side, uh, minus two sigma, that would give you something like, uh, that would be seven, 9.688. Eight, eight. So, on the two sigma front, then with everything, that would be this right here, and on this side, that would be 10.3. Okay, so we would expect that 95 point, a little bit, but 95.5 or so percent of all our values fall within the plus or minus two sigma, and notice in this case, we have 59 out of 60, which, Let's find out what that is. So 59 divided by 60, we get 98.3%. So 98.3%. So that is fairly close to our 95.5% theoretical value of a normal distribution. So again, calculating the standard deviation gives us a really good picture of what the general layout is of the values we can expect, like in this case, the number of ounces in a potato chip bag. And that's why we do the standard deviation.